Welcome back everyone to Elite Dangerous. Today I'm going to be showing you how to outfit your Cobra Mark III for maximum profit in trading. You've finally saved up enough credits and you can now trade in your other ship for the Cobra Mark III. 380,000 credits, it sounds like a lot, but Hell, you get a great ship for it. This is the multi-purpose Cobra Mark III. It can do anything you want it to, but right now I'm going to show you how to set it up for trading. It can have a huge amount of cargo space. I think it's above 60, and that is a great upgrade from the adder, which I'm assuming you've now come from. You should have gone Sidewinder Hauler, probably maybe even Sidewinder straight to the adder, and then you've gone to the Cobra Mark III. This is assuming that you've just been doing trading. So how do we get this ship up to a trading status? Well, I'm going to show you what it comes with first off. You're going to come with a 16 um, fuel tank, which is a much better jump range and a much better fuel capacity of course um, and then two eight capacity cargo racks I think those are class three types that it gives you even though these are class four um, slots and also a class two um, or three class two slots and one of them is a capacity of two cargo rack and a class four shield generator and a basic discovery scanner so that's pretty much it you also get utility mounts and everything of course it's a multi-purpose ship so if we go into the outfitting section, I'll show you what I actually do. So I remove all the hard points and all of the utility mounts. I don't feel like they're needed when you're trading at all, and they definitely shouldn't be needed. If you're feeling like you're getting interdicted a lot, I'll leave a link in the description to show you how to deal with interdictions. I've uploaded that a few weeks ago. But also, um, if you do feel like you're getting interdicted still and it's still struggling, then maybe you want to equip a medium hard point or a small hard point to try and deal with that. Um, but usually, you're not going to be able to fight anyone off with it if you could just bring one hard point and the more hard points you actually have the more your weight's going to increase and the less jump range you're going to have which decreases your chance of having a really good trade run so the, when you are of course when you're always doing and um, you're outfitting your ship you want to be reducing your weight as much as possible to get the best jump range as possible and also increasing your jump range which i'm going to show you so your internals this is where everything changes quite a lot i'm going to go through each option and what you should be upgrading first so what you should be upgrading first you probably bought your Cobra Mark III and you got 100,000 credits. You want to be leaving a bit of credits for trading initially, and then you want to start upgrading your compartments. So the first compartment you want to actually be upgrading is your internal compartments, which are here. These all want to be changed to cargo racks. Now, I did leave my shield generator on. I felt like there was a lot of cargo space that I was happy with to leave that shield ge generator on just in case I failed with an interdiction or I got interdicted. So I left that there as a backup. However, if, you're, if you've got a route and you're feeling pretty confident that you're never getting interdicted or you're getting interdicted very little and you're dealing with it very well, then you can actually remove that as that is another class 4 internal compartment and that's another cargo rack of 16 right there so total um, on your class 4s you've got 16 32 48 cargo rack possibilities right there and then you've got your class 2 um, internal compartments and that's going to add another 12 now I, I now that is um, I believe one of them is a discovery scanner and then two of them are empty initially so um, 12 right there is pretty easy to upgrade I think they're about uh, 2,000 credits, no, 3,000 credits there for your cargo racks, for your class 2 cargo racks, and then your um, class 4 cargo racks are actually about 30,000 credits, and those will be probably um, your second upgrade, and then your shield generator if you want to do that as well, that'll be your next upgrade after that. So what should be your next upgrade after the internal compartments? Well, it's pretty simple. You're only going for your frame shift drive. That's what, that's what is going to mainly increase your jump range, which is shown in the bottom right here. But of course, to power your frameshift drives, you're going to want to be changing your power plant, possibly, depending on the power that your frameshift drive actually needs. And also, you want to be changing your power distributor. So, your power plant. This is what powers the frameshift drive. Your power plant wants to be as light as possible while providing as much power as possible for the th for the items you need. Now, currently, I actually only have about eight, less than eight megawatts that I'm using, and that I will be using when everything's deployed. If you have any hard points, so actually, I could go for an incredibly light unit, like um, like this one. I could go for a class two rating C power plant um, for a. Um, mass of 1.3 tons. That is going to increase my jump range and my and reduce my mass quite a lot. And it's still going to provide enough um, megawatts for what I actually need it. 
So it's perfect, then that could be a downgrade. However, I just like to have the possibilities. If I ever go to a, um, a station and there's a hard point or anything that I like to have a look at, um, I prefer to just have the more power wattage or yeah, megawatts of a, of a power plant, but um, I upgraded to a 4C, you're going to come with a 4E one, it's going to have a mass of 10 tons and only 10.4 megawatts, and if you upgrade to a 4C, you're actually going to have a half the mass and then get a little bit more power capacity out of that, that's just personal preference on this, but make sure that your power plant can actually power all of your things when they are deployed, because you don't want to be messing around with, um, you don't really want to be messing around with your power distributor, I forgot what it's called, where you change the priorities of everything in your ship um, for what gets powered down if you can't power everything. So just make sure your power, can, power plant can power everything and of course it's going to change when you change your frameshift drive. So your frameshift drive wants to be as good as possible and of course again as light as possible. So if I upgrade for instance to a frameshift drive of class 4C, I am going to increase my jump range by an insane amount. Currently I've got 9.37 light years when I'm fully cargoed up. That's not much, but if I upgrade, I'm going to go to 13.45 light years. Suddenly the galaxy map is becoming much more accessible and if you can find a you probably want to be maybe a 4B at most on your frameshift drive because if you go into a 4A, that's I think that's almost that's over 600,000 credits. By that time, you probably want to be upgrading to a lake on type 6. But okay, so class 4C probably very possible right there, and you've you've increased your jump range by four light years or three light years, a bit over three light years. So that's very good. Next one is your power distributor. A lot of people don't seem to upgrade this one, but I do because you can have constant boost. Um, for, so for right now, your power distributor actually um, does all of these things. It increases your engine's capacity mainly for us though, and your engines recharge. With what I've got right now is a class 3A power distributor. This for me allows me to stay in boost constantly. So instead of traveling at less than 300 on the speedometer when you're not in super cruise, I'm actually traveling at almost 400 all of the time when you've got a better power distributor. So as soon as you come out of hyperspace um, or uh, super cruise at a station, you can now tra be traveling at 400 instead of 300, much better. So with those things upgraded, you, you can also upgrade your thrusters. That is gonna give you more increased speed. I think it's acceleration and more top speed. So you can get that as well for maneuverability around stations. And of course, your life support and sensors, you can actually get the lightest version of them that you can find. And that's gonna, of course, reduce your mass and increase your jump range. And then, of course, when you've got enough credits to trade in the ship for a lake on Type 6, you can then go ahead and do that like I'm just about to do. And that is it, guys. So hopefully this has helped. If it has, please do leave a like and go check out my other Elite Dangerous videos if you're interested. There's trading tutorials and outfitting tutorials, exploration tutorials, all on the channel. So make sure to check them out if you're interested. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.